Miss Humphrey here with another math video. Today we are going to use what we learned about comparing fractions to put fractions in order. So let's take a look. It says locate and label points on a number line to help you write three tenths. I'm going to highlight the fractions they want me to use. Three tenths, eleven twelfths, and five eighths in order from least to greatest. <coughs> so the first thing I'm going to do, they gave me a number line that has one half on it. So I'm going to think, where do all of these numbers compare to one half? The way you can do that is by looking at the number three tenths. Half of ten would be what? Two times what gives you ten? Five. So three tenths is smaller than one half because one half would be five tenths. I'll draw a picture to help you see that. If I have five and I fill in one, two, oh sorry, I need ten actually. If I have ten, which is what my denominator is right there. If I have 10 and I only fill in three, I have not filled in half. Half of them would be filling in one, two, three, four, five. But if I only fill in three, it's less than half. So I'm gonna put three tenths smaller than one half. Okay, then we need to compare the other numbers and we can do that by using by having them find a common denominator um, or you can again compare them to one half so 11 twelfths if I have 12 pieces and I fill in 11 of them That's almost completely full. Do you see that? And if I draw eight pieces and fill in five of them, it's more than half, but which one is more? Definitely 11 twelfths. So I'm gonna do five eighths, because that seems like less, and then I'm gonna do 11 twelfths. So that's one way to solve these problems using pictures, a number line, using the number one half to help you kind of visualize um, the order of these. The other way we can do it is we can use our greatest common factor. So only one of these, for example, down here has a denominator that is not the same as the other two. So, to compare them, I want to help it by finding a common denominator. I already see the other two have denominators of 10, so why don't I try to make this one a denominator of 10? What do I need to do to this 5 to make it into a 10? Multiply by 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. So now, if I'm comparing 7 tenths, 9 tenths and 2 tenths. The question says what has the greatest value? The one with the greatest value is 9 tenths. Again, if we cut a pizza into 10 slices, nine eating 9 of the slices would be the most without eating the whole pizza. Okay, let's look at this one. They don't have one in common yet, so we're going to have to list our factors of 6 12 and 10, or multiples, sorry. So I have 6, 12, 18, 24. I'm going to list, I haven't come to a multiple of 10 yet, so I'm going to keep going. And 30. Let's do multiples of 12. 12, 24. 36, 48, and 60. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm seeing a pattern. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. The number I want to use is going to be 60 because I know 6 times 10 is 60. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do 5 over 6. And how do I get it to be 60 on bottom? I multiply it by 10. So I have 50 over 60. Then I'm going to do 7 over 12. What do I multiply 12 by to get 60? It's 5. So then I, oops, then I have 35 over 60. And then the last one I have is 7 over 10, which is, I'm going to multiply 10 by 6 and 7 by 6, which is 42 yeah. over 60. So now, looking at these three numbers, I have 50 over 60, 35 over 60, and 42 over 60. Which number is biggest? 5, 6. Because 50 out of 60 is more than 35 out of 60, or 42 out of 60. The other way that you could think about this is that I see these have common numerators. So I know that the one with the bigger denominator is actually the smaller number. So of these two, I could cross this one out because they these two have a common numerator of seven. And remember what we talked about yesterday, the bigger the denominator, if they have a common numerator, then the smaller the value. So I can cross that one out. And then if I'm comparing just these two numbers, then I could have just found um, a common denominator between those two numbers, which is what we've been doing. Okay, I want you to try this one on your own. Go ahead and pause your screen and try to put these in order. I hope you're unpausing and coming back to me. I see two of these have common numerators. And I know when a number has a common numerator, the bigger denominator actually means it's smaller. So I'm going to cross that one out because I know between one-fourth and one-eighth, one-fourth is definitely bigger. So then when I look at these two numbers, I'm just going to find their common factors. So I have four, six, eight, twelve, twelve. Ooh, I found it. They both share twelve. So I'm going to take 1 fourth times 3 so that my denominator is 12. And I'm going to take 3 sixths times 2 so my denominator is 12. Which of these numbers is bigger? It's definitely not that one. 3 out of 12 is smaller than 6 out of 12. So that means 3 sixths is the biggest number. So the question asks us actually to put them in order from least to greatest. So I know the least is 1 8, then 1 4, and then 3 6. The reason I know that is because I identified at the very beginning that 1 8 was smaller than 1 4. So if I found out 1 8 is smaller than 1 4 and 1 4 is smaller than 3 6, that's the order, 1 8th, 1 4th, and 3 6 Again, this is kind of complicated, and I know fractions are challenging, so if you have questions, I will definitely host a Google Meet um, before we have a test on this or anything. So let's try one more. There are a lot of numbers here. So what I'm first going to do is I see two of them have common denominators. I'm going to use two different colors. So I see a common denominator of 5 and 5. So I can for sure compare those. Which one of those is bigger? 4 fifths. So if I'm writing them in order, I know for sure it goes 3 fifths, if I'm writing them from least to greatest, then 4 fifths. I can say that for sure. Now let's look at these two have a common numerator. So if I know the number with the bigger denominator is actually smaller, 
that means 3 tenths is smaller than 3 fifths, so I'm going to put 3 tenths over here. I have one more number to place, which is 2 third, and I think I'm going to compare it to the number I have in the middle. So I have 3 fifths, and I'm comparing 3 fifths and 2 thirds. So I'm going to list the factors of 5 and 3. The multiple, sorry, 5, 10, 15, and I have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So the one that they have in common is actually 15. So I'm going to do some work over here, and I'm going to do 3 over, fifth, over 5 times 3 is, oops, I'm messing up, whoa, is 9 over 15. So 9 over 15, and then I'm going to do 2 thirds times 5 is 10 over 15. So that tells me 2 thirds is bigger than 3 fifths. So I'm going to put it here for now, but truly I haven't compared it to 4 fifths yet. I know it's bigger than this, but I don't know that it's smaller than this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make 4 fifths into 1 with a denominator of 15. So 4 fifths times 3 times 3 is 12 over 15. Is that bigger than 10? Yeah. So this is our order of fractions, 3 tenths, 3 fifths, 2 thirds, 4 fifths. Like I said, I know this is tricky, so just try your best. Find common denominators, use the patterns that you know about numerators and denominators, and try to put them in order in the Google form I give you today. Make sure you post questions if you have them so I know.